The scripture reading is Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. And he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess, and a publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful, merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house, justified rather the other, for for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Good to see each of you this evening. It's been a good day, hasn't it? Comfortable and sunshine and, and just a day that we could just enjoy ourselves and, and uh, just relax. But a day that we could worship. But it's certainly good to see you. Luke chapter 18, beginning uh, in verse 9, is a passage that we... I think are very familiar with. We've read it many times, we've talked about it, and I think that it's something that uh, we can enjoy this evening. The main emphasis of this parable, let me suggest, is not prayer. Jesus is using prayer to teach us a lesson. But that lesson is far deeper, well, if that's possible, uh, than just saying a, a prayer. Jesus introduces, or at least Luke introduces, this parable by saying that Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted themselves that they were righteous and despised others. That was a common problem that Jesus faced while he was here on earth. For some reasons, especially the leaders of the Jewish people, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, Zealots, and others, took the statements of the Old Testament where God chose Israel as his own people and concluded that they were more righteous, they were more special, than all the other people of the world. Anyone who was not of Israel was a Gentile. And as we learned this morning, the Jewish people especially, by the way, not all Israel were Jewish. And we could spend some time talking about the differences between Israel and the Jews. But mainly those people that lived in Palestine were Jewish. They were from the tribe of Judah. Jews short for Judah. And they felt that they were special people. They had special rights, they had special access to God, and they had, could expect at least special blessings from God, especially the land in which they lived. And they felt that anyone else that could not trace their lineage back to Abraham through David 
had no right to that land. And that they were trespassers. And so these Jewish, especially Jewish leaders, felt that they were special. God here heard their prayers, but God certainly would not hear the others' prayers. And so we look in this parable, there are two men. There's the Pharisee. They were the ones that were in charge of the law. And they demanded strict adherence to the law, so not so much as contained in the Old Testament, but as contained in the Torah. And then there were the publicans. The Roman government exacted taxes from the people. And the Roman government would hire Jewish people, Jewish men, to collect those taxes. And these tax collectors could, well, they were mandated to collect a certain amount of taxes from everyone. And they were given the privilege of ta collecting extra taxes over and above what the Roman government demanded. And they were able to enjoy a higher level of existence because of these extra taxes that they collected. And by the way, they had the power. If you didn't pay the taxes that they levied, they could sell your property. They could sell your children into slavery. They could do whatever they had to do to collect the taxes that they levied. And so you can imagine, often they would collect higher taxes than the people could pay. And they reduced many into slavery, poverty. And so the leaders, the Pharisees, began to not only criticize, but they began to isolate and to drive the tax collector away from the people. Matthew was one of those tax collectors. Maybe you can remember Zacchaeus, a tax collector. There are many of them. And then there was this tax collector that is listed in this parable. Two men on opposite end of the scale. One righteous and the other unrighteous. One accepted by God and one rejected by God. One justified and one condemned. Two men. In every way, on opposite ends of the scale. In life, in religion, in every aspect of the world. These two men came to the right place, the temple. If you look in Acts chapter 3, you will find that it was the practice of the Jews to come to the temple three times a day and pray. And that's when Peter and John met the man at the beautiful gate and healed him. Oh, that caused all kinds of problems with the Pharisees. So they came to the right place. They came to do the right thing. They came to pray. Pray. 
and pray they did. And so Jesus talks about the prayer that they offered. I suggest to you that we learn from this parable that not all prayers are accepted of God. Not all prayers are answered. Not all who pray, pray sincerely and righteously. And so Jesus is using these two prayers to teach a lesson on humility. And so he describes the prayer in words offered by the Pharisee. Verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Interesting. His focus was on himself. His focus was on what he had done in life. His focus was on how good he was. How much better he was than anyone else. Sound familiar? Often happens today. Be careful what words you use in prayer. Be careful about the attitude you have in prayer. Your attitude, your words will often determine whether God hears your prayers or not. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah says, The Lord's ear is not deaf, hand is not shortened, that he does not hear your prayers. But your sins and your iniquities have separated between you and God. Thus God will not hear. I suggest to you that God does not hear. He chooses not to hear all prayers. And it's evident he did not listen, hear this prayer of this religious leader who thought he was so righteous. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Wow, that's not bad. I think we can be thankful that we're not like some of the people of the world. Then he goes on to say, extortioners and unjust and adulterers. And then he says, or even as this tax collector points his finger at that tax collector and he knows that that tax collector is condemned of God. Nine times he's going to tell God how good he is. I fast twice a week. In the Old Testament, there were particular days that you fasted. He wants God to know that he does more than what's required of him. He fasts twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Interesting. I am so much better than anyone else. It reminds me of Peter. Jesus was teaching a message on forgiveness. And Peter looks at Jesus and says, Lord, how often do I have to forgive my brother who trespassed against me? Till seven times? The old law demanded three times. Peter's going to say, I am better than the average. I forgive my brother seven times in a day. I'm good, Lord. Jesus looked at him and said, not that you have forgiven your brother seven times in a day, but 70 times seven. As often as he comes to you in repentance, you forgive him. Impossible? Yeah. For a mortal man, but not with God. So this tax, or this Pharisee, 
is telling God how good he is and how he deserves to be blessed by God. And God certainly is obligated to answer his prayer. Interesting. In verse 13, and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, pause just for a moment. Evidently the Pharisees as they would stand on the street corner or in the temple, they would look to heaven and they would tell God, I, I'm looking right at you, God, and I have a right to demand from you a blessing. Jesus emphasizes that this tax collector, this publican, don't know his name, it's not important, would not as so much as lift his eyes toward heaven, but be his breast saying, God be merciful to me a sinner. Compare the two prayers. The prayer of the Pharisees was lengthy. Focusing on himself. Telling God how good he is. How he deserves a blessing. And how God is obligated to answer his prayers. The publican does neither. The publican just breaches himself on the breast and admits that he is a sinner and he needs desperately God's mercy. Did you notice the Pharisee did not ask for mercy? Did not ask for forgiveness? Just a blessing. Just telling God how much he deserves. The publican doesn't deserve anything, but just begs for mercy. While the emphasis of this parable, I think, deals with the people who think they're better than anybody else, and I have a right to look down at others. Folks, we don't have a right to look down at anyone. But we do have the obligation to tell God that we all are sinners. And we are in desperate need of God's mercy. The Pharisee told God what he deserved in his own mind. The publican doesn't deserve anything. You realize if we receive what we deserve, we all would be lost. There's none of us. I don't care what we have done. I don't care how much we think of ourselves. None of us deserves the love of God, the mercy. That's what grace is all about. Grace is God giving to us that which we do not deserve, cannot deserve. But was solely based upon his love and his mercy. That's the publican. Give me mercy. I don't deserve anything. I am a wretched sinner. Have you ever honestly confessed your sins? <clears throat> Excuse me. Confess your sins to God openly, in detail? Think about it for a minute. Jesus says, I tell you this, in verse 14. This man went down to his house justified 
rather than the other. Justified. What a great word. Someone has said the word justifies means that, well, it's just as if I, I, as if I had never sinned. That's what Jesus said about this tax collector. This tax collector was justified, just as if he had never sinned. What does that tell you? It tells you he for, he's, was, was forgiven. Jesus says, as a forgiven person, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, indicating that the Pharisee was not justified. The, the Pharisee was not blessed by God and forgiven by God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Have you ever been humiliated? Really? Why were you humiliated? Could it be that you may have left the wrong impression about what you thought about yourself? If we are humble, we are a servant. And we very happily and joyfully serve simply because we appreciate the service that Jesus gave to us. And I want to be as he was. This man was that kind of a servant. And he was justified. We need to be very careful the impression we leave in the minds of others. And I've often said that any time I leave the impression that I'm more important than anyone else, you need to talk to me. You need to tell me where I've made my mistakes. Because if I don't humble myself, God will. He who exalts himself will be humbled. But he who can humble himself will be exalted. It's so important that we learn what humility is all about. James says, so does Peter. If we humble ourselves in the sight of God, God will lift us up. That's one requirement if we expect God to bless us. Humility. Now, what is the message that I gain from this parable? Let me suggest to you that I learn the need to be humble. I learned the value of humility. I learned the attitude that I need to have when I talk to God in prayer, whether it's in front of the congregation or privately. I need to be like the tax collector. Powerful parable parable that we all at times need. Oh, I want to be the tax collector and not the Pharisee. I want to be justified by the Lord. I want the Lord to know how much I need Him in my life. Without Him, I'm nothing. With him, I'm everything. That's the message of the hour. And if you are here and you're subject to the gospel in any way, come right now while together we stand and sing. Keep on a stranger at the Lord,